cloud. Good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon, depending on where around the world you are. Jeremy is uh, joining us from uh, from England in, in Oxford. Uh, this is the Fission weekly video chat where we talk with interesting people building interesting stuff around the world, usually with uh, tech and decentralization and open source as, as some of these themes. Uh, Jeremy, uh, creator of TiddlyWiki, which has been around for a while. Uh, so we're going to basically talk about that, talk about Fission, maybe some of the things that have changed, um, and just really see where the discussion goes. So really looking forward to uh, to chatting with you more, Jeremy. Uh, please uh, let, tell us a little more about yourself and, and let's get started. Sure. Hi, Boris. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, <clears throat> and um, and yes, it's, uh, it, it's uh, uh, strange times we find ourselves in, but um, uh, there's some comfort in, uh, in technology and, and work and all of that. Um, so uh, I'm try, I could give a very quick introduction to how TiddlyWiki popped up, um, uh, like five minutes, a couple of um, uh, screens to show you as well. Let me just turn that off. Um, so uh, 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 TiddlyWiki um, uh, uh, happened kind of by accident in my late thirties. So I'd um, at the time I'd been I'd worked for a big bank. I'd worked for a couple of startups, and I was kind of quite immersed in that conventional um, startupy sort of um, um, sort of set of goals and things. Um, and TiddlyWiki popped up as a tiny little idea um, uh, that was triggered by thinking about writing and my own, at the time, difficulty in blogging. So I, like lots of people, made lots of blogs and then never wrote in them. And then this part of the story is when I, like, again, lots of other people wrote my own blogging software to uh, deflect from. But the thing I was particularly interested in was the, the idea that faced with a big blank text box and thinking about writing as being like writing an essay that I thought maybe I find that difficult and something about the way that I thought about writing I was interested in this idea of writing in tiny little chunks where you would write in the smallest possible units would, that would therefore be easy to write and they'd stitch themselves together into a story that would evolve over time so I was, I was thinking about a scaffolding for the for the writing process and um, let me just try and share my screen. And then, um, that button, I think. okay. And so um, very quickly did this, which was, uh, it, oh, sorry, only things that uh, are not bold link to things, excuse me. But it, um, as I click on a link, you can see that it opens, uh, uh, this it opens the, the target and you get this this very simple idea of how um, the page builds up as I click on things and I disclose the level of complexity that kind of uh, that I'm interested in. Oh, it won't show me the source code of it for some crazy reason. So, so when when was this? And and I'm and am I looking at this correctly and saying like you 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 um, you have original files uh, sitting around. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is 2004, um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I had a, I had the same Gmail account then, so I've still got spam from 2000. No, that's probably been deleted. Uh, uh, that's a, that's amazing, and I, I kind of want to add some context here as well. Um, uh, I'm going to call out James, who's a who's another old guy. We were working together back then in 2004. Um, and we were working on the Drupal open source CMS. Yeah. Um, and we were working on launching the first kind of commercial service around Drupal. Um, and uh, so 2004, 2005 was, was when we were first getting started. And for context, when people watching this later, um, Amazon, specifically their S3 service, did not launch until 2006. And 2004 was also pre Facebook and um, pre YouTube. Yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, <laughs> for lots of us. It was the golden age of the internet because it was when the internet was small enough that you could shout across it, and uh, it, the blogosphere particularly felt like it was 
uh, yeah, that it was universal. Uh, 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 a, a, a relatively, well, I'll, I'll say relatively English focused and, but uh, a, a, a global clubhouse. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, well, little did we know. <laughs> uh, uh, but interesting about Drupal, uh, um, I, uh, I, I'm in awe of the community around Drupal and uh, well, again, as uh, those of us have been doing things for a long time, it's quite interesting how you make institutions that survive that long. Um, I was just going to uh, show the code that was uh, tiny and trivial, and it looks like half of it is the animation engine. You know, there's nothing to it. It's just the minimum amount of messing around with the DOM, minimum amount of CSS to get it working. Wait, uh, wait, Jeremy, are you telling me that you wrote plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript without a framework? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's fun days, fun days. Um, and at the time, uh, there was very little documentation for this. Um, that uh, it was pre Web 2.0 as well, which is uh, now so far in the past, <laughs> it's hard to remember what it was like. But but uh, the it, it, so it there were really only things like Gmail and Google Maps that did any ambitious um, interactivity in the browser at the time and uh, and for me and lots of people i think it was quite a fun discovery that the browser was in fact already capable of it, it was already a general purpose desktop runtime uh then um so i made it a tiny bit uh more polished but i mean you can see it's literally the same um uh with oh trying to find things that have links um <clears throat> Uh, Safari and, drop shadows. I love it. Yeah, yes. Uh, I was uh, I was very interested in uh, showing where a link goes to and from, um, and it, this also has a couple of ideas that um, survive in TiddlyWiki. That uh, the the site subtitle up there is a special tiddler, um, like that. Uh, and similarly, that menu on the left, uh, another special tiddler. So the, uh, there was already, although this was literally only a demo of no practical value, um, there was already uh, the, um, the idea of the sort of meta idea of it not just being a place where you could type stuff, but you could also, by typing stuff, control uh, the user interface. Um, so I put that on the internet on 20th of September 2004 and I gave one talk at yeah, back in the days when you used to go to rooms and talk to people and gave one talk about it at a group that I was already a member of um, that wasn't even a really a software group it was called Dorkbot they're still going today um, the subtitle is people doing strange things with electricity and it was much more focused on kind of um, uh, craziness in the, what we now think of as the kind of makers area. Um, but, uh, but nonetheless, it went viral. <laughs> so I had that fun experience of uh, waking up on a couple of days later and to tens of thousands of hits back in the day when your server showed you um, hits. Uh, and uh, uh, and I got lots of attention. So uh, the guy from Social Text rang me up, and I had lo lots of um, kind of I don't know, be be being slash dotted, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and uh, I'm gonna have to annotate this with all the old references. <laughs> yes, I know. Sorry. It's, uh, no, 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 no. It's 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 amazing. Uh, that would have been uh, Ross at Social Text, I think, as well. So yes, that's right. Um, that's right. I'm taking some notes, and this is going to be super oh, fun. And, and indeed, you know, um, Ross and others at Social Text are friends to this day. Um, uh, and yet, so funny. This is so old, and yet um, my store of co stories about computers start in the late seventies. So this is this is a recent past for me. <laughs> um, the, uh, but what immediately happened was uh, actually I got a bit frustrated because uh, people would um, blog, the equivalent of tweeting at the time, this is amazing. And uh, Ev Williams tweeted, uh, this is mind blowing, never seen anything like it. All these people that I admired, um, very complimentary about it. But a large number of them said, it'll be really cool when it's finished. And uh, I found that very frustrating because uh, they, um, <clears throat> it was obvious to me that um, 
uh, that it couldn't be finished because it's uh, oh, I didn't really explain the um, I was only interested in exploring the user interface part of the idea so I created this as a static HTML file because that's the simplest way to manifest a user interface idea and it seemed obvious to me that finishing it was doing the 99 point you know almost everything else uh, that this obviously manifestly doesn't even attempt to do it's just doing the um, one feature of the user interface uh, but um, uh, then uh, crazily I came across somebody else had written a um, Firefox extension that um, oh well I should show you what uh, if I, I've made some changes here if I try and save changes I uh, you get this uh, a dialogue let me make it a bit bigger oh I can't make it bigger I don't know why I can't make that bigger. Uh, that says, oh, it's probably because my terrible CSS at the time, yes, doesn't let you do. Uh, Ouch, this is a bit of a hack. And basically, it's just spat out the source code of the wiki uh, in a text box for me to copy and paste and uh, put in the right place in the original, splice into the right place in the original file. And somebody had done a uh, Firefox extension to do that automatically. So that when you press save, um, it would save um, the original HTML file with your modifications. And uh, that was quite fun. But then we discovered that, astonishingly, the same APIs that the extension used to do the file access, you could actually do from the HTML file. <laughs> because this 2004 was also the era before security existed. Um, so, uh, well, before security concerns existed. So uh, that was that suddenly was a, a stunning moment for me where this thing that I had thought could never be of itself of, of practical use suddenly became of practical use in a way that that turned out to be fascinating. Um, so I did a bit more work on it and a friend of mine helped me with the visual uh, with choosing a nicer color palette <laughs> and uh, and visual design. And then this was picked up by um, a chap called, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, Nathan, Nathan Bowers, uh, who's uh, still an active hacker today, where he uh, took the base TiddlyWiki and restyled it. Um, interestingly, keeping the same colors, but, but restyled it in a much more contemporary way at the time. Um, and this was a, was a stunning success because at the time, Firefox was the most popular browser, Chrome didn't exist. And um, the usage model of TiddlyWiki at the time for um, the kind of, well, was, was really compelling. You'd take this HTML file, you open it in the browser the same way as you'd open a Word file, do some edits, press save, bang. And so we, uh, uh, I, I was thrilled with the way it combined what I thought of as the uh, uh, the semantics um, of a uh, of a document application, but the experience of a uh, web application, um, and um, yeah, so then it all kind of kicked off. And at that point, I, this is probably six months after the original release of TiddlyWiki, and so from that point onwards, I was um, you know, much more focused on TiddlyWiki in reality because I realize now it was because a community had accumulated around it and, you know what what keeps software I, well, I used to say that software is a symbiotic organism that needs um, a host geek or a, or a series of um, geeks to um, to keep it alive um, and uh, I'm sure my interest would have uh, moved on to something else uh, quite quickly <laughs> Um, so that, 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 that was the first part of the story. And then very briefly, uh, I uh, was lucky enough to uh, my tiny little consultancy company about around TiddlyWiki got acquired by, by BT, the big British um, telephony company, communications company. So I worked there for a while. And then uh, in nine years ago, left that to do the thing that surely all of us developers dream of, which was to do a 2.0 complete makeover of the original idea. 
and as it turns out to make a whole different series of mistakes <laughs> but um uh but imperfect though the results are to the wiki five that it, it has proven to be more flexible but the original um 2004 version of tiddlywiki is still going strong and still has its adherence um and it's turned out to be very important to me to uh that that's the case that the tiddlywiki has ended up being used by people as a tool for thought as a repository for um you know their most i was going to say the most intimate but i don't mean in that sense i mean the, you know the, the most um, personal uh material and um uh and so therefore it has to last a lifetime and we don't have much certainty <laughs> well especially now but the idea of um a file being readable feels durable an html file being readable feels reasonably durable and so I think for a lot of users of TiddlyWiki, they really value that. They value that they know um, that they can verify for themselves that their data is secure. You know, Facebook and Google run phenomenal data centers, but uh, there's nobody, uh, I have no ability to verify that my data is up to date and you know, Universal burn those master tapes and so on. There's, there's some stuff that I want to look after because uh, uh, I know that I'm the person that it's most important to, I'm the person that it's most motivated to. So somewhere yeah. along by creating a kind of quirky thing that was limited and constrained by weird <laughs> technical things, um, ended up uh, being quite important, uh, sort of being philosophically important to me. This uh, And uh, the, so the uh, Tiddly Wiki is, is open source and that, that's part of it, part of the sort of respect for users. Um, so I, as a consumer, there are plenty of things I absolutely want to pay for and I would rather pay for so that I'm in a customer relationship with the supplier and I can shout at them and so on. But there are some things that, um, you know, we, we should, uh, well, <laughs> it's better for both parties, I believe, if we don't, uh, if we don't charge money. And it turns out as a software person, my big motivation is making the software better. And the best way to make software better is for it to be as widely used as possible so that you get as much feedback as possible and to be in continual dialogue with the people who are using it. Um, so hang on, say, hang on. We're like, you're like, I have to go back and I'm like, man, there's like a million tweets that I can like take out of all of this stuff. No, no, it's, it's, it's super fantastic, but I just want to want to pull some of those things out. So I, I, um, so you've moved to open source. Um, when, when did you actually, I don't recall, um, when or if you, you, you like put a license on it and open sourced it. Was, uh, the interesting point. Yeah. Initially, I, I thought of it um, like a blog post because I thought it was, you know, sharing an idea that was in a way that other people could build on. I had no real experience of open source. Um, so I just did that, which was my understanding of... Um... Oh, no, this was added later. Of course, sorry, this is the... Um, uh... I need to find I need to find an earlier version with the correct uh, that so it didn't have a license had a um, uh, uh, Creative Commons thing, and then I I got emails from people saying why don't you open source it? And I politely said why should I? And um, and then realised that it was it was reasonably easy. You know the the, the key was well first just saying it was open source but um then establishing a subversion repository and i needed help for that but um you know then subversion and track um we were an open source project <laughs> yeah yeah well subversion the hot new thing at the time oh uh, <laughs> yes indeed, indeed. Uh, and um uh from my point of view, those were the glory days when I understood version control. <laughs> uh, whereas now uh, I'm uh, continually losing a battle against Git. But that's really good. I think Git exists to make us feel humble. Um, okay, so a few other things in there that I, I kind of want to um, dive into a little bit. So we, 
a bunch of things that you came over. I mean, I think one of the things I want to kind of pull out is I definitely think that there's something that you said there about um, user interface innovation that is really interesting. Um, so you did this as an experiment, you worked on the user interface and it was, it was literally a different interface to your writing, which became a different interface to thinking, which, you know, looped into each other. Um, I feel like we've seen some waves of this that, that people maybe don't pause to notice. One of the ones that I always bring up is I think of Trello as pioneering that Kanban view that only Trello had. And uh, then of course, one once people saw it and saw how it was implemented in HTML, then all of a sudden we're here today and in many, many different interfaces and many, many different data views, Kanban is a generic UI component yes. um, that people know how to work with and are modifiable and so on, but, but like there's this activity there. And I feel the same way about when I use TiddlyWiki is uh -huh. I have a certain way of writing and interacting with, yeah. with my data. Um, it's, it has now become quite polished. I mean, I use TiddlyWiki every day as a user in, in contexts where I'm not touching the code at all. And I uh, say so thanks to the attention of people, you know, um, thousands of people rubbing all the little corners off. And the, the magical way in which in open source, we have a mechanism to, to deal with people's conflicting needs, which is plugins. And you know, the way that plugins are there, I was going to show you, only because you mentioned Trello, there's a TiddlyWiki plugin that thrills me where um, it uh, is an alternate template that looks like Trello. And so when I move right. exactly. Tiddlers around, I'm actually um, adding and removing tags to them and I can switch back to this view. Uh, and, and that, uh, <clears throat> you know, that, that's really not me in any sense that's the, the community but it's a wonderful thing to see when uh people get that um yeah uh and so it's a great privilege i think for all of us to be getting through these strange times being busy is uh is, is good <laughs> and um uh and the the way that these communities are a kind of crucible of um and you see people going to um uh, putting in effort to produce these amazing things and then it encourages everybody else. Um, yeah, we, we have a we have a Kanban view. So we use the discourse forum mm. for our community forum. And in fact, behind the scenes, we use the we use it both publicly for community and then we actually use it to run our company and organizational stuff. And uh, I have a uh, Kanban plugin um, that is implemented completely at the um, display layer where you add and remove tags to put it in those columns, That's right? Exactly. And I'm like, here we are again. And, and you know, someone's like, what? There's a Kanban view for this forum? I'm like, of course there is, because it's a pattern, right? Yeah, no, uh, exactly. Um, I'm fascinated in that way, uh, looking at it. I, I was going to say, uh, one thing I noticed is how slowly those patterns emerge. You know, the they, 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 uh, spreadsheets, Trello, um, the ones that catch on are, are really rare. And obviously spreadsheets uh, is the big one. There's, there's one I'm fascinated by, which has been studied a lot, but still hasn't really taken off, which is this idea of uh, zoomable user interfaces where um, we, uh, well, the, 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 it's a field um, uh, that lots of people have been interested in for 20 years, but my take on it is that we, our brains evolved in a in a savanna situation to 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 uh, survive in a certain situation, um, and um, and we live in a two dimensional worlds. To and if I, it's very easy to use two dimensional placement sizing to convey relationships. You know, even without even without establishing any conventions with a viewer, it's kind of obvious that those things are related together. Um, and similarly, those three things there, and the fact that this is bigger conveys that it's more important. Um, so I'm endlessly fascinated in those kind of shared scratch pads where people can um, evolve a, a shared information environment that's not really based on 
that kind of um, the stuff you see in uh, Jira, lots of check boxes and pull downs, but is this sort of very fluid, very sort of human ways of, um, you know, that thing's on it. I put that in a cupboard because it's unimportant. This thing's right in the middle of my desk. I love it. That, that kind of um, uh, intuitive ways we have of conveying importance, relative importance. Yeah, um, I mean, I think, I think there's the yeah there's this loop of using it and trying it and then like again how do those ideas spread and then these foundational things so when you live in a 2d world that makes me think of the brett victor uh humane representation of thought where the tools that we have and the interfaces we have are actually hacking feedback loops into our brain and then we can only think certain things absolutely yeah. based on the on the interface so i i did um uh, unless you're going to get there, I, I would love to I'll do a, an, another slight segue into because you you know you 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 said this like tool for thought, and I did want to loop around and say you know like we've got this explosion of uh, I would say that the backlink is in the process of becoming commoditized both both something that people are being exposed to and becoming commoditized. Um, TiddlyWiki has had backlinks. And programmable backlinks and remixable backlinks and transclusion for a long time. Um, what are you seeing? Uh, are you seeing like renewed interest in TiddlyWiki as people yes. like look down the list? Yes, no, I think so. I think thanks to you know Ro Rome's. Um, I always love it when new stuff comes out because I'm constrained by decisions I made years ago is the downside of where I am. And so seeing what people do who are not um, unconstrained by those decisions is really fascinating. It's, um, it's the paths I didn't get a chance to, to explore. And um, uh, from my perspective, Rome does have a really significant um, innovation of uh, th that I thought previously that TiddlyWiki was quite good at. So TiddlyWiki, consolidates the idea of fields, a general purpose mechanism for attaching metadata to a thing um, with, um, uh, with everything else. So um, uh, uh, with tags, so tags are a type of field. And, uh, and so there's a kind of consistency there. Uh, but um, uh, what Rome does is realize that if you've got backlinks, you can actually build everything else off the backlinks. So they use backlinks as a proxy for tags and there's, an, I mean, there's obviously no reason as I understand it with Rome's data model where they couldn't do something like tiddlywiki tags as well but the primacy of um, backlinks is really inspired and it's uh, but you know it it also creates complexity it's in a similar way to, to tiddlywiki has the same we all have this obsession with we simplify software by making a whole load of disparate things be the same thing you know we consolidate on one Thing, one model that we then blindly apply to everything. And to some extent, Rome does that too in, a, in, a, in an arguably more sophisticated way. So big changes, Rome has you know, um, gobbledygook IDs, which um, typically Wiki says you can have those if you want, but it doesn't rely on them. Um, and those decisions lead to, you know, in, in Rome, uh, to me, uh, a, a kind of really interesting difference is that you see a lot more scaffolding in Rome. Um, and I've seen that Rome users, uh, I've seen some extensions that add even more scaffolding dates and so on. So that that feels like something that, that people want. And of course, people have in TiddlyWiki, but I always like the way in TiddlyWiki that you're always looking at something that could be a web page. Um, uh, mm. and doesn't too, you know, tries not to feel too much like an app. And, and in fact, yeah lots of design decisions yeah no i mean i think that's very interesting is is where we're kind of going down this path a little bit as well or or exploring it um where um i think the concept that has arisen this year is a recognition that we do have a document centric web that yeah. we would call from back in the day a web page uh and an app centric web um and uh and of course obviously like shifts between the two but it turns out that there are toolkits that are going to lend themselves to do one or the other and that's design decisions and interaction decisions and and everything else i mean i think it's very interesting to hear you say like oh everything in wiki makes you feel like a web page 
where for me, it was always the most appy uh, yes, yes, web page. I'm so sorry, my doorbell's just gone. Please, no I'm problem. Just, excuse me for one sec. Yeah. yeah. Sue, I got to get you uh, uh, a copy of TiddlyWiki. I, I, I feel like it's one of the things that you would might go down a massive rabbit hole. It lets you massively interlink and annotate notes. It's amazing. So sorry. <laughs> no problem. I, I feel like I'm doing all the talking and I, I don't know if that's how you normally do these things. So I can uh, wind me up. Pretty, and I can pretty open. Well, since we have a pause, uh, does anyone have questions for Jeremy right now? Okay. Uh, I actually, so I'll, I'll happily toss it back to you if you want to keep going, or I probably have a couple of questions for you myself. What do you, I, what, where do you uh, want to take I, us next, Jeremy? To, 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 towards um, the, you know the, the area oh. of mutual interest. So maybe take 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 your questions first, perhaps. But. Okay, uh, you froze there for a second, but I think I caught you. Okay, so um, are you? Um, you know, you caught you kind of talked about how uh, eleven years ago you did a rewrite. You're at, at TiddlyWiki Five. Um, are you full timing at 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 TiddlyWiki? You get to to work on um you know paid consultancies um would yeah. love to hear like uh, you know that that side of things uh yes i'm very very lucky for um it took a long time um so for the first phase of tiddly wiki five um i was doing cto jobs so uh, sort of um interim cto jobs i guess you'd call them i'm so sorry is the doorbell again <laughs> no problem no problem <laughs> I'm gonna to have to break my rule and actually edit this video to put out the, the stuff in the middle. Boris, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, but that's now, um, now there's somebody else in the house to okay. answer any subsequent <laughs> doorbells. Um, uh, and you were kindly asking about employment. So for, to, to begin with, I was working on other things, but I would always try and fold TiddlyWiki into it. And of course, everything that you do has a documentation element. So uh, I would use, at the very least, for those in that era, <laughs> I'd use TiddlyWiki for the documentation of what I was working on. And in some cases, in more kind of uh, integral ways to what we were doing. But over the last maybe five years, um, the TiddlyWiki has matured to the point where it's been possible um, to ex just work on projects that are explicitly about TiddlyWiki. And so certainly a, a huge benefit of that is that the clients all understand that some of the time they're paying me, I will be working on the core of TiddlyWiki and not um, specifically on, on code with a name on it sort of thing. So it's quite interesting, you know, uh, so I knew nothing about open source when this started and I've had to, and I've learned about it from the inside in the best position. Um, and this, my, so I should show you my, um, uh, my company, uh, which people can hire me from, is um, uh, um, I have to explain to clients why open source is good for them too. And uh, I find it's really easy. You know, the they, they kind of central ideas of open source that software is better the more people that use it, um, the, the, the best way to mitigate against the inevitable bugs um, is uh, well, not the only way, but the best way, I believe, is through open source. And I also believe that open source is a foreshadowing of how humans will cooperate in the future over 
uh, other endeavors because it's uh, you know it's breathtakingly scalable and the way that uh, I could have I spoke to a lot of VCs when TiddlyWiki first became popular and um, uh, I, uh, I I think said that there's, if I had gone that route I would have in some sense uh, it, it it wouldn't have ended up as this profusion as this uh, the extraordinary pleasure of seeing so many ideas that I'm interested in being played out by other people in a context that's easy for me to understand, makes it very accessible and within a very positive community as well. Uh, that's interesting to hear. Well, I, I guess there's two reactions that I have. So um, in those early 2000s, Web 1 to Web 2 switch, right? That was also rise of open source, but it was also still very core um, FUD from, in particular, Microsoft. Yeah. Um, I am feeling right now um, that um, open source both does and doesn't have to be explained. Um, um, so very interesting to hear that 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 y that you're saying that you that you are explaining it to clients. Um, I am finding that for uh, a lot of younger developers, their expectation is that everything is open yes. in terms of the yeah. code. Yeah. But they haven't necessarily cottoned on to the like, how do you do the collaboration and other parts and why the, in fact, those are likely the more important parts. Yes. Um, so are, do you think of yourself as the um, benevolent dictator for life of Tiddlywiki? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it's not useful because, you know, you never think of yourself as a dictator and that's the sort of, and it literally never happened. But I believe, well, I, I think it's universal. The community, the Tiddlywiki community, um, often talks about itself. You know, communities do. I think it's quite healthy. And, um, and one of the reflections that comes up often is that the community believes that it is um, supportive and friendly to newcomers and that it doesn't make people feel stupid for asking stupid questions and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, and that makes me really happy, obviously, because I believe that that's how I, you know, I try to be in, um, in dealing with the outside, you know, dealing with everybody else. Um, and so th I, I guess, you know, there's some, a, a paradox that I said, I'm, I've learned about open source from, a, from the middle, but a paradox of that is that makes some things very, very hard for me to see. So I, th that I, I believe that we all people in my role do sort of in some way set the not set the behavior but kind of um uh, determine how the community our behavior determines how the community plays out and so um if uh, to the extent that that you can characterize a community as successful i guess that has something to do with us but really nothing nothing that i can take credit for because uh it wasn't very conscious uh, and, and it wasn't um, at the beginning all I was doing was answering emails and then you know put it on a mailing list because that was easier than answering the same question from lots and lots of people. Um, I was going to show you the, 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 this, this thing about talking to clients about open source this is one of my clients is a, uh, a, a manual for um, health workers who work with adolescents with mental health problems in the UK and they they do most of the training for um the various people around the country who do that kind of work uh and they the people responsible for writing the manual got excited um you know, kind of had an approach for how you work with young people in difficult situations uh found the software and then actually ended up taking on some of the characteristics of it so they think of uh, the uh, the protocol, the approaches they've got as being open source, and they've um, you know, uh, uh, and they and so makes them uh, and the some some of the people who so they've got lots of authors who are editing, writing hypertext because there's many uh, the, the 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 point of this system is that uh, if you give somebody a manual uh, and say. Uh, this is what you should do in your dealings with young people. 
um, that uh, those young uh, that, that people will reject the manual if it contains material that doesn't seem to apply to them. So uh, there's basically an adaptation of the manual for each team that's using it, and they can make their own changes, uh, which they've only made a few quite recently, um, that are only visible to their own team, while the rest of the content uh, is inherited from the main manual. So it, it, it's it's the it's it sort of reflects the way that um, community resources and communities are forked. Um, uh, but it's a model that uh, the people doing the authoring, the people writing this material, are psychologists and trainers and you know people uh, from a non-technical background. Uh, but a fun thing to to watch is that they. Uh, they end up doing quite sophisticated hypertext authoring. Um, and you know, an old interest of mine was hypertext in the classic sense. And, uh, and it turns out there aren't very many situations where there's large scale um, concerted writing on uh, in hypertext. And this material, the manuals that they're working on are themselves now, some bits are 10 years old. So they, again, they've got that kind of, um, <laughs> uh, same perspective of the passage of time. Yeah, and I think I think something that you said that I just again want to like pull out and highlight it's it's um, um, the usage of the tool and and its capabilities and its curve of learning it and its um, I'm going to say hackability. Yeah. There's also like customization and personalization that that, that mean different things. Um, create feedback loops. I mean, and going back to what you said about like welcoming people, no stupid questions. TiddlyWiki is an incredibly, I'll say deep system um, out of very basic building blocks. So, um, you know, I really found um, that both in my writing and authoring mode, I really enjoyed mixing that with my um, computer science programmer mode, where again, sometimes you're like, oh, I was supposed to write something, but instead what I did is I spent half a day um, <laughs> customizing my tiddlywiki uh, with slightly different views. Um, but I think that was um, that was all really interesting. And what I, what I see in the tiddlywiki communities, I see people who think of themselves as um, the people who are merely using the tool, um, who then ask, how can I? Has anyone? Um, and and then people, oh yeah, I, I have this. And and sometimes people have done the work to like turn it into a plugin. But of course, you can essentially author a plugin in TiddlyWiki itself. Is that not correct? That's right. Yes. So do you want to maybe talk a little bit more about this? Like, is meta programming the right word? I I I'm a I'm a terrible computer no, historian in that I don't really know a lot of this programming language term, terminology. Uh, Brooke. Yeah. Um, is a programming language theorist and loves and, and, and studies this. And I merely am mostly a user who reads a lot. Uh, yeah, no, I can, I, 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 I'm very, the reason why I tend to make up names and words for things and, and inside TiddlyWiki is a, is a slew of neologisms is partly because yeah, I'm not that confident that I'm using other people's words uh, correctly. And, uh, I'm very, I, 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 didn't study computer science or anything. So I don't, you know, I don't have much of a, um, a systematic basis for, <laughs> or probably for, for anything much that I, that I do. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so it's turned out another a thing that I discovered about myself through doing Tiddly Wiki is something that I care incredibly passionately about. And I didn't realize at all, which is that, um, we, and I say we meaning software developers, um, are, we're the wizards of our era. We live in a world in which software is riddled through everything that we touch and every endeavor that we might try to start needs software. There's, there is no business for software businesses now. And so we, we have magical powers by being able to understand that world and to shape it. Um, and therefore, uh, there are some things in the world of, well, therefore, I think our highest calling um, is, to, uh, uh, is to, to pass those gifts on to people who wouldn't think them, of themselves as being developers, so to try and reduce the friction. And, uh, and for some people, that means an emphasis on um, 
oh, what's the word? A sort of, um, I don't know, um, making, well, what it, what it ends up being in Tiddlywiki is very, very messy. <laughs> um, uh, and it turns out, you know, you need, uh, in, a, in, a, in a world, you need a little bit of mess. Mess generates, um, uh, is fertile in some, in some sense. Um, so, uh, uh, so, so, so I, I, I rail a bit about things like React, say. So I can be rude about React because it started by Facebook, but I'm certainly not being rude about the people who care about it, um, nor the people who work on it. But, but React is a beautiful piece of work that creates a compelling mental model for thinking about certain problems. Um, but it seems to me like a, a a restaurant handing you frozen food because it's it, it you, they've gone to all that work to create a model for the wrong people and for people that it doesn't work for anyway because in fact if you're a react developer just as a tiddlywiki developer whilst the model that react and tiddlywiki propose uh, is very helpful for thinking you still are dealing with a browser and you have to think about browser things you know that none of that stuff really uh, can go away so, so yeah, turned out uh, to be an accident. T TiddlyWiki promotes uh, what we used to call cargo cult programming, um, and in quite a subtle way that um, uh, the it's trivial for anybody working with TiddlyWiki to be 100% confident that they can rewind any unwise changes that they make, um, and that's really colossal. That that uh, elsewhere. Uh, I always give the example of a LinkedIn profile, you know, a LinkedIn profile, if you were looking for a job, is something you want to kind of tweak and probably want to A-B test, I don't know. Um, and, um, uh, but you make a bunch of changes to your LinkedIn profile, there's no easy and obvious way to go back to the way it was the day before yesterday. And, uh, and in TiddlyWiki, you take a snapshot of the HTML file, you work on that HTML file, Kind of speculatively if, if your experiment worked then it becomes the new version uh, if it didn't then you throw it away and so that that gives everybody one of the actually fundamental magical powers for developers which is version control so uh, the i believe that um uh, the psychology of wanting to be a developer which you know for me was a matter of being an adolescent and as an adolescent you don't have much power and the thing that uh, I think I appreciated in, uh, and recognized in the software was that I had power that, that you know it was I could be in control um, and uh, that um, uh, uh, that my mistakes weren't visible to anybody else, you know, unlike on the sports field, say. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so, it, so it, 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 it turns out that I think those properties are very important that uh, people need to, uh, 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 Need to um, need to it needs to be very very cheap to run experiments, and they need to be able to share the experiments so that they can. I, I was going to touch on cargo cult programming. You know the way that uh, people in TiddlyWiki can copy and paste code and change you know a few magic phrases in it without necessarily understanding the entirety of it. So that kind of that would be very high risk in lots of situations. But um, but in TiddlyWiki, users can, to some degree, protect themselves against them. Yeah, uh, themselves, meaning you can literally make a copy of the file, mm -hmm. call it experiment one or old version. I mean, I think that's what's amazing and a credit to you is that you can pull up the file that has probably been endlessly copied and shuffled between machines and has been on a USB stick or whatever from 16 years ago. Um, it um, yeah. I, I really, I really, really appreciate you sharing this. These are some of the principles that we are thinking about with Fission, where, yes. Yes, you know, we're playing around with things like um, uh, personalizable apps, where yes. we, we, we can't quite get to the point that you have to have a little bit of programming knowledge to do a few things, but what we're going to encourage developers who build apps 
with Vision and, and our web native framework to do is to do things like a check mark of things um, to kind of be a fully Vision app. And one of those things will be make it so that your users can edit stuff. And I'm going to start really stupid. It'll, it'll be something like um, a user editable CSS file. Yeah. And then built into the platform uh, because it's files essentially underneath, but built into the platform in the browser, this ability to, to remix or clone, we're still working on what the language will be because we, we, we in fact want almost disposable apps in the sense that make lots of them, make lots of copies. And, and this is our theory is that we want to help more wizards come up um, um, and, um, and, and really have, ha have folks uh, wander that path. I think your insight about React is very interesting. Um, you know, we're going to do some sample app stuff in React because there are so many existing React reactors Absolutely. That if we can give them something that they're familiar with, they can, they can build on it, which is, I think, another interesting thing um, um, in the same way that, that, you know, um, we want to add a, a, a saver to, to TiddlyWiki so that we can be part of the next 10,000 TiddlyWikis that get born. Um, um, I, uh, we, it, 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 some of what you said there reminded me of uh, Beaker Browser, which um, I'm sure you're aware yes. of. Um, yes. and, um, Paul Frazee is a, 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 a fantastic, uh, the, uh, entertaining tweeter as well. I very recommended, uh, following him. Um, and they, they evolved kind of the same, a similar vision with Beaker, the idea of forkable apps. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, but sounds like the wrong word. Um, uh, the model that they chose separates code and data. And um, at the time when Paul and I were talking, uh, it was um, uh, uh, that seemed to him, but you know, it's kind of self evidently the logical way of doing it. And there were kind of issues with mixing um, the uh, code and data together. Uh, and uh, so I think that's a tricky one to pull off because, of course, most people's expectations would be met by the model that I think Beaker still has of, of applications and, uh, and data as, as separate things. Um, but it turns out some of, the, some of the unexpected things that came from TiddlyWiki came from the single file version. Um, and I realize now that that would be very hard to retrofit you know, to a different app. And, and arguably that's what service workers try and do, but they don't even try and do it to a single file. You know, they do it with uh with magic um so yeah i'm mean, interested in in that it, it, I, I touched before the call started i touched on tahoe least authority filing system which is a very early um thing that from my point of view not being a cryptographer or anything like it looks a little bit like ipfs and for that it as i understood it one of the things that was um, very handy about TiddlyWiki was the single fileness because resolving one of these signed URLs by design only returned you a single file and there was no way that, uh, no plausible way that you could make relative URLs work. Um, so that said, that was my understanding. And since then, TiddlyWiki has become much more capable, uh, capable TiddlyWiki browsers have become much more capable. I work all the time with TiddlyWikis of 100 megabytes. Um, it's absolutely stunning with um, multimedia files in them. There are some things that are more robust than others in the face of large amounts of data, but you know, I know what I'm doing when I'm walking across the bridge. But that, and that's not really a testament to TiddlyWiki, which is written in a sort of brute forcey way with the aim of being easy to understand by non-programmers. It's the fact that browsers have just now this stunningly engineered runtime environment um and there's kind of a, a war in uh, there's a lot of people who don't like things like tiddlywiki because of the way that they are browser based you know they would rather work with systems that were static html files or you know, um uh and yeah yeah it's kind of um it, it seems it, obvious I, to me I think, yeah, I mean, I th there's a lot of context here where, where we see people trotting some of the same paths. I think um, a, rec a recognition that I had in, in back in the day um, 
in working with open source systems like Drupal and WordPress and that part of Web2 and, and growing that blogosphere from a club of like a thousand or 5,000 people worldwide to many more. Uh, I'm really proud of the work we did in building the community and getting so many more people being able to share words directly with each other. But um, I realized the part that we absolutely screwed up was that for all intents and purposes, Drupal and WordPress are essentially impossible to self-host. Um, you, you, I, like, I don't feel confident doing it because I'm not enough of a security engineer to secure the servers where these things run. And so that is one of the things that we are thinking about that, that, that is another wizard power. And in fact, developers and front end and designers are faced with this same challenge today where even within the, the subclass of people who do these things, there's this extra DevOps things, right? When we used to SSH or SFTP or plain unsecured FTP edit files directly on a server, that was a really easy and actually relatively pleasant without a lot of abstractions. Okay, the server's over there, I make an edit, I maybe have a file here and then it's live over there. Um, and we can ignore various things about you know, a, a less um, a less threatened environment from a security perspective at that time, perhaps. Whereas today, the amount that you have to learn to get a file, to get an application online to share with others uh, is, we're going to say, too difficult. Um, yeah. And that and that we need to use, and with this amazing execution environment of the browser, even there, there's so much in there that that it actually hasn't been wrapped in a way that it's easy enough for people to to for developers to use. Never mind further down. So our hypothesis is there's even more going to become in this browser execution environment. Um, we are looking forward to WebAssembly. Yes. Right. Industrial strength programming. Yes. In this web style of the browser, anyway, it, there's still like. Again, that's high wizard work, but our hope is that that high wizard work can be put into WebAssembly module files, apps yeah. that can be then remixed and called in a much simpler way. Um, and that's what we're looking forward to of, of some of these environments, right? Um, um, so like that's some of the like landscape that we see just starting today with some of the goals of like, no, no, we need that's many, certain, many, many yeah. people to do it. Uh, I, I, I'm um, compelled by how the browser has turned out to be, we're, we're talking about how the browser is a, 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 a compelling development environment for end users because it's the virtual machine that they can provision a new one with control T. Um, and um, uh, oh, so sorry, I lost the thread while I was thinking about command T. Sorry, Boris. <laughs> That's probably my my sign that I've I've uh, I've talked for for too long. So forgive no, me. no, that's 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 amazing. Like these these are exactly like I actually I see the biggest challenge that we have today is hacking people's brains and concepts to say that this is possible, right? So I'm I'm so excited that we have the the tiddlywiki as an example that we can point to and say no, no this works and it has worked right i want to loop around to your you know somewhat snippy like well tiddlywiki has been serverless for quite some time <laughs> if that's what you mean by serverless welcome um, to the world of dissidents um <laughs> yeah yeah it's i feel that the browser serves my purposes spectacularly well kind of by accident because half of the things that the browser is trying or the browser developers are trying to do i i I believe uh, needless complexity at the wrong level. They're sort of gilding what everything looks like to an HTML developer. And um, I, 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 I don't think that, I think that problem generally is better fixed with tooling. Um, so I'm not a fan of service workers, I'm not a fan of uh, that sort of cat-handed cat way of trying to retrofit offlineness onto an application at the cost of making a browser um, have implants, um, what a security team would call implants that you can't see or control. Terrible, terrible idea. 
Um, and yet, uh, they quietly in the background, they've been optimizing for web pages. Uh, my web pages have lots of DOM nodes. I was working on a problem where I've got like an embarrassingly over 100,000 DOM nodes in a page and I you know, need to do it. And it was fine. It's, it's not that that turns out to be the problem. Uh, so we sort of win because the fundamentals are improving. Um, but things like, uh, oh, and the custom elements, custom elements is like VBX controls for the browser. Um, and it's a level of abstraction, an entire thing that you make that literally is to hide complexity from HTML authors that you could do with a post-processing step. Just, I just don't understand how that, uh, how that all of that happened. But that's what you get for being a dissident. You end up disagreeing with everything. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yeah, we have gone for kind of a, a pretty heavy, heavy hour here. Yes. Um, this is this has been amazing. Um, uh, does anyone else on the heat team have some have some questions for Jeremy right now? I have a question. Uh, do you have any lessons learned on writing plugins for web based software? Gosh, yes, isn't that an interesting one? So uh, this version of TiddlyWiki, the old one, um, the plugin system was that you made a tiddler with a certain tag and it would be executed as JavaScript when the thing started up. So that's, again, I don't have a word for this, but it's the plugin model where you just have your internal architecture and then you open the back doors, the hangar doors to whatever wants to happen. So. The, the plugins um, can reach into any part of the system and modify it. And that created a really fertile world in TiddlyWiki Classic where plugins would radically change the nature of the system. And then in TiddlyWiki 5, in order to um, support kind of normal usability features of being able to download plugins and inspect them and so on, what constitutes a plugin is a bit of a higher level thing. Um, and uh, we don't, we, plugins are sandboxed. So in Tiddly Wiki 5, there's by design carefully some constraints on what a plugin can do. It's fairly easy to break through them. Um, but I feel that that balance is what's tricky. You know, the, having a plugin system is an admission that you can't think of everything nor do everything. If you constrain that plugin system with an API, which obviously in some situations has to be a very narrow API for security concerns, but, um, but if you do that, then you're constraining the things that you don't know. And so you're cutting off value that, by, you know, it's the unknown unknowns um, uh, sort, of, sort of thing. So uh, I, my, my experience is uh, that TiddlyWiki can take advantage of the fact that the browser itself is sandboxed. So we have, in a way, a very liberal world where plugins can, as I say, there, there's some constraints, but they're fairly easy to break through. Um, but the user is protected by the browser sandbox um, broadly in most situations. And so uh, that, I think, you know, that's very different than installing WordPress plugins or browser extensions, you know, th these these uh, in lots of environments, um, the plugins are privileged um, and yet, uh, I mean, and they can be in TiddlyWiki, but you'd have to structure things in a particular way. Um, but yeah, good, it's a really good question, Steve. Uh, and it's the sort of thing that, um, you know, I said that, that we've, the way that open source influences the architecture of projects, um, which I certainly hadn't anticipated at first. But you know, if you if you know that um, uh, how an open source community works, there's no question that you structure things differently because you you structure things for for ease of hackability. Um, so TiddlyWiki goes out of its way to make everything overridable, and you know. Um, uh, because I, I, my personal philosophy is wanting to stand back and see what happens. So I want to um, enable uh, the, well, you know, the most fertile sort of environment we can. But Boris, you, I, I say, uh, ter terrifically kind to let me rant on. Uh, it's, um, uh, 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 it's always, and it's been a great pleasure. And, uh, and thank you for your 
uh, for your really interesting questions as well. Much appreciated. Oh, absolutely. This this is this is super great. As as you know, as we head out and and do more, um, you know, I'm going to summarize your answer there because I think it's actually amazing. So one is um, you created a bit more of a high level thing so that the plugins felt more like plugins. One, and the other thing that I heard you say in summary was only constrain them for security concerns and try and let them do as much as possible if you want the surprise of seeing how people completely remix the core system. Is that fair summary? Yes, and, and but I think I'm privileged to be able to take that stance because of the way that browser sandboxing works. Right, so yeah, protected by that layer. And, uh, and how that, you know, that knowing, I, I said how the browsers are virtual machine friend users and control T provisions new machine, but even more important um, is that until service workers came along, control W um, ends the uh, virtual machine with, you know, without any equivocation. Alaram, did you have a question? Oh, yes, actually. Uh, mm, uh, uh, have you, um, I, I don't know, have you any references to some node systems? Maybe you have some, uh, maybe you already have some practices uh, with uh, taking nodes, which you implemented in C2D Wiki. And if you, for example, uh, started to making, uh, creating now a kind of uh, node application from scratch. Uh, what did you prefer and or change, maybe? It's really interesting uh, uh, question, and it sort of touches on how I use TiddlyWiki and um, and how other people use it. So, so my own note taking needs are. It turns out are really simple. <laughs> um, that for me, most of the value of TiddlyWiki is having. Um, uh, discrete notes with their own date and you know a timeline of notes um, that I can search and cross-reference and hyperlink. So that's that's really the very core functionality is more than sufficient for me. My, I've, I've run several tiddly wikis. I've got a, a notes one for my work and it's got uh, just shy of a thousand tiddlers in it. Um, when I know for a fact that there are many people who are much more active about they they do note they do active reading where they'll take a lot of notes while they're reading a new piece of material. So that's absolutely not me. I just uh, for me note taking is narrating my thought processes um, in the rare occasions when uh, when I don't do it publicly. So a lot of my thinking is done on GitHub, you know, typing in GitHub. Um, but there's some bits that. Uh, that I need this kind of scratch pad space for. And then I have uh, a wiki for all the songs that I play on the guitar, and I have a wiki for recipes. And uh, when I had COVID, I had a wiki for tracking my COVID symptoms, yippee. Um, uh, and so they're all, they're all fairly simple. And so and my philosophy of note taking would kind of be, I want to be able to search them and I want to be able to tag them and there's there's not much more. And but TiddlyWiki supports astonishingly um, complex approaches. And, and I, th I think historically that's because the roots of TiddlyWiki, the, the, in, the global interest in 2004 wasn't so much in note taking, it was in getting things done in this idea of uh, managing your to-do list. And I think it's actually the same thing. It's all about making sense of what's in my brain and what's actionable and what I need to do and so on. And uh, over the years, I've seen people evolve incredibly complicated um, conventions, rituals for managing their note taking. And I just love it. To me, it's like walking into somebody's study, you know, people's studies are if you're lucky enough to have one, are different. You know, um, some people have notes on the wall and they, they use the space differently. And so it is with DiddlyWiki. Some people, uh, we, we run, um, or we have occasionally run sessions like this where we um, um, screen shares when people show their personal stuff is really interesting. And you see some people have really tightly packed screens with every little corner filled and a button to anticipate every single thing that they might do. And some people 
and this is possibly me actually, have acres of blank space and really appreciate when I'm trying to think, you know, not seeing as little, uh, seeing as, little as possible, basically. So, so I think I've, uh, my philosophy, therefore, is a meta philosophy of how do we accommodate the, uh, the, the hyper textually interconnected universe of possible ways of, of, of making notes? How do we establish a common vocabulary for people who are interested in note taking so that they can um, discuss it? So things like backlinks uh, wasn't, a, wasn't a word um, uh, we used references in 2004. So somewhere between 2004, backlinks came along. And that, that's crystallized, uh, you know, it's what language is really great at. It, we, we've well, it's taken an existing word and given it um, a clear meaning in this context that's allowed us to um, it's, it's really move the conversation on. And so in fact, it's uh, yeah, all, so all, all credit to uh, to Rome for um, kind of seeing that, anticipating that. Um, so yeah, Valerian, thank you for the question. Is that a good answer? Yeah, I think there's, uh, I think we keep coming back to Jeremy, the, the meta everything. Um, I, I will say that I think that there's another key thing because of the roots in 2004, 2004 was also the beginning of tagging. Yes, Which again, yes, we, can, yeah. we, we, we can't even imagine it. Um, um, I'm losing the name, but I, I need to go find it up again. But and we coined terms like folksonomy. So we're yes. moving from knowledge management where that was a role where uh, uh, someone at a company would make a taxonomy. Yes. And then we came up with folksonomy where individual users or groups could create tags on the fly. And um, TiddlyWiki was unique in that um, because you had this base like a tiddler or chunk of text that you just made a tag the same thing. So a tag wasn't just a label for sorting, but you could also use it as a meta note. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, and the, I, I mean, a lot, yes, uh, we, well, uh, I think we're showing that we could uh we could carry this on <laughs> um uh for I, I, I will let you go um this has been amazing thank you so much um uh, first of all, thank you so it's a great honor and uh, uh and i said so appreciate your questions and um and yeah i'll uh, i'll come back and carry on <laughs> where we left off and be great awesome i'm gonna hit the stop record button which is not the same thing as ending so th thank you very much jeremy thank you thank you so much thank you